Hello, I am back with another update. Um, I'm feeling really bad about how long it's been since I have done a video update. Um, the last one I did, I was about 10 days post-surgery and was had just gotten my um, super pubic catheter removed. And now I am one month post-surgery. So it's been four weeks. Um, a lot has actually happened in the last couple of weeks. Not Not so much anything major, but I definitely feel the need to update. It's just life has been crazy. Um, I'm actually a school administrator and so it's back to school time. I've been back to work part time. It's been crazy around here with my kids. My kids have been sick. <laughs> so um, just now getting around to updating and I'm sorry for that, but I will try to fill you in on everything even if it's a long one. So last I updated, I got the super pubic catheter out and um, that was awesome, although it didn't immediately improve everything as my last video said. But I really quickly after that, my baby, who is about five months, got a really bad case of RSV. <clears throat> he actually has a breathing condition anyway that he was born with, and so him getting RSV was very scary regardless. But um, so I was really busy helping the husband, but trying not to help the husband too much with taking care of him. And then of course, you know, luck would have it that I contracted the adult version of baby RSV, which was a lot of sneezing, runny nose, and a lot of coughing. Not great after a pelvic floor reconstruction surgery. Um, not only was coughing and sneezing very painful, um, but it's also, you know, you're not supposed to be doing that for your repair. So I knew that every time I coughed and sneezed, I could just feel it down there. It was a very dull, like achy, um, almost just kind of like a shooting pain down there every time I coughed and sneezed. So I right away tried to get into the family practice doctor. I knew it was RSV, but I was like, okay, if they can give me anything for a cough, whatever, I need that. I need to minimize coughing, sneezing, whatever. Um, and I did call my surgeon's office and explain to him what was going on. And they, just like me, were, you know, um, reasonably worried. They said, well, you need to do everything you can to minimize the coughing, sneezing, try to bend forward when you do it, try to hold a pillow, uh, because yes, this is not good on those internal stitches or really anything going down there with your, going on down there with your recovery. So, um, luckily I only had three to four days of that, but I am, I'm still, you know, like a couple weeks later worried about what the aftermath of that is going to be. Like, did it screw something up? Did I rip some stitches? You know, I don't know. Uh, and I guess I won't know until my six week checkup when he tries to determine if it looks like the repair was successful or not, but that was not good. Um, so then my older son, the three-year-old got it. So that's just an explanation of how crazy life has been. Um, about that same time, I started noticing that it was so I got the catheter out and I was feeling a lot better. I was, you know, urinating less often, having less urges. Um, but then I started noticing like it was really burning down there. It was burning when I had to go. It was burning when I went. It was causing some external irritation just from the urine hitting all of my girl parts down there. Um, and I was having like feeling like I wasn't draining myself when I would go. And just so you guys know, I don't know if I've talked about it in a previous video, but the only way that I can feel even adequately drained, maybe not even fully drained, is if I go normal and then lean to the left and then lean to the right. And that's the only way that I feel like I can drain my bladder. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I don't really ever feel like I fully drain my bladder here in a minute. But anyway, that was getting worse and burning and I was feeling like I couldn't get hardly anything out. So I started calling the, the nurses at my surgeon and telling them what was going on and essentially was written off as this is part of surgery recovery. Well, I did not feel like it was. So after a couple of days of this and them just telling me that this was just normal surgery recovery, um, I had my appointment with my family practice doctor to try to get some cough medicine or something. And I had them go ahead and um, take a urine sample for me. Well, um, sure enough, the urine sample came back that I did have a pretty bad UTI. It was positive for white blood cells, leukocytes, you know, blood, everything. So I did have a UTI. They started me on an antibiotic. Um, and it was only a five day antibiotic and took me a very long time to start feeling better. Like, to be honest, I wasn't really feeling better even at the end of the antibiotic and I was very worried. So I made an appointment to go in and see, um, 
the surgeon's nurses, I finally convinced them that there was actually something wrong with me. And even when I was there, they were trying to tell me, oh no, I don't think you had a UTI. I think it was just external <laughs> dirtiness causing your positive urine culture. Well, I knew that was not the case because I had taken a, a, a shower right before I left the house. I was not bleeding at the time. I really didn't have discharge at the time. I had cleaned myself very thoroughly with one of those wipes. Like I knew that no, I like seriously had a UTI, um, whatever. They catheterized me, checked my urine, and sure enough, that came back clear, which makes sense because I had done a full course of antibiotics. But, you know, my, my suggestion to you with this would be, if the nurses don't seem to be taking you seriously and something feels wrong to you, you need to make them take a urine sample or you need to insist on them seeing you, insist on an antibiotic, whatever the case is. You know your body. And whatever these nurses are telling you, yes, they do this every day. And yes, they may see 20 patients a week, as I was told, 20 surgery patients a week, but they've never been through this surgery. And if something is not burning you a couple days prior and all of a sudden now it's burning like the dickens when you pee and you you're having all kinds of problems and like you're externally irritated from your urine, something's wrong. And so if there's anything that I've learned in this process, it's that I have to advocate for myself because they are hearing from a lot of patients and they've never been through this. They don't really know what feels normal. Um, and you know, neither do you, but if you go one day from feeling fine to the next day, feeling this, that, it's not going away. It's incredibly irritating. I've had UTIs in my past. I had a bunch of UTIs while I had the prolapses. That's how I know exactly what they feel like. But it's, I've been very frustrated by the fact that pretty much every time I've called my nurses, it's been, this is just part of the recovery. Or I've literally been told, well, if you rec read your recovery paperwork, you'll know this is a six week recovery. I have read that paperwork front, back, sideways, 50 times. And essentially it does not tell you what you're gonna feel, what is normal, what's not normal. And I think it's really normal to be a person who's gone through this surgery, especially when you've had as many repairs as me and to have questions about, is this okay? Is this normal? Is this healing properly? Should I be concerned about this? That is normal. And they should answer your questions nicely. So I had a UTI because about five days into the antibiotic, which was the last day, I started feeling better, okay? And I had also bought some of those home UTI test strips and they were like raging infection, like bright purple, which is the color of an infection on those home test strips. And it was purple at the beginning of my UTI. It was purple about midway through my UTI antibiotic. And then now they're clear. Guess what? Because I had a UTI. So I was being told it was nothing. It was just surgery recovery. No, it wasn't. It was a UTI. So, okay. Off my soapbox. I digress. Call your nurses and make them listen to you if you think something is wrong. Okay, next, I've got a little note sheet here so I can remember to talk about everything that I want to say. Um, let's stick on the urine topic. I'm worried because before my surgery, the only incontinence issue I had was stress incontinence with sneezing, coughing, laughing, whatever. I would only have urine leakage when I did those things. No other time. I did not have dribbling. I didn't have urges. None of that. It was just if I cough, sneeze, or laughed, I was going to pee my pants. Now, I have dribbles all throughout the day. Every time I hear water, every time I have the slightest urge to pee, every time I'm a little moist. So if I'm sweaty or if my lovely estrogen cream is still leaking out from the day before, anything down there, like dribbles. And sometimes I barely make it to the bathroom. Like if I'm like, I gotta go. I am like hardly making it to the bathroom before I'm dribbling out. That was never a problem before. I would say I also am still having um, really frequent urges. Like I'm going to the bathroom at least every hour um, throughout the night longer. I am making it longer. I'm only going maybe twice a night now. And that's partially because I have a baby or a toddler getting up in the middle of the night and then I feel the urge and I have to go. Um, but I'm worried about, I've read that, you know, POP surgery can cause bladder problems that you never had before. I've also read that these slings can either be too loose, too tight, you know, mispositioned or whatever and cause these types of issues. So my hope, as the nurses say, is that this is a six week recovery. You know, it could take even longer, that everything is just trying to settle down down there, you know, that this will be temporary, but I'm worried it's not. 
And um, I mean, obviously I had to have the repairs that I had, but it's gonna be really discouraging to me if my urine incontinence problems are worse now than they were before. Because to be honest, I would take peeing my pants when I sneeze and cough over peeing my pants 10 times a day, just a little bit, enough that I need to probably wear like a panty liner all the time. Nobody wants to do that. And I wanted this to fix my problems. So I'm worried about that, but we'll see. And I'll update later. Um, looking at my notes, I am still being very cautious to take my stool softeners. I have to take them about twice a day and there's an occasional time I will take a Miralax. Like if things get a little bit too hard, I take a dose of Miralax because I'm still struggling with a hemorrhoid. Um, I'm kind of figuring out though that I don't think it has much to do with my bowels. It has to do with whether I've overdone it. Like I think that they pop out for me when I've when I've been standing too much or maybe walking around too much. Not so much related to my bowels, but definitely a hard bowel will not help. So I would suggest continuing to take your stool softeners. They should be pretty much free um, when you get them through the pharmacy on the prescription from your doctor. Like I had, I think three refills of mine and I've been doing that rather than buy them. Um, but keep taking those two or three times a day. It is not gonna hurt anything. And trust me, you're, it's gonna hurt if you let things get too bad. Um, I have not been regularly taking ibuprofen or any type of pain medication. Now, sometimes at night when I'm going to bed, I'm like, man, I am, I'm kind of sore down there or I'm feeling kind of inflamed, swollen, whatever. So I'm going to take some before bed. Um, but la that leads me on to the next topic. <clears throat> I would say I have definitely been overdoing it on a regular basis. Um, this was a really bad time of year for me to have a surgery. Like I said, I'm a school administrator and I had my surgery July 24th. School goes back about August 24th. So I had about one month to recover at home and then I felt like I had to get back to the grind. And part of that was because I had just taken like a four month maternity leave and I'm out of time. So part of it is the financial aspect of it and the being out of time. Part of it is I haven't shown my face around my staff now in five months. I need to get back to work. And the other part of it is just <clears throat> the feeling of like I have so much to do and I, I need to be there. Um, so I did return to work at about the three week mark, three week and a few days, but I only worked half days and I made sure I sat a lot. I would say that the primary restriction I have been able to follow is I am not lifting. Like I said, I have a five month old baby. He's about 18 pounds. He's a big boy. I do not lift him. Um, and I don't lift my son, obviously. I That is a restriction I have been consistently following, no lifting. But the restriction of like no bending, never squatting, like, it's not possible. Like, unless you are a, a very old woman, like older, retired, who can just lay on your couch all day and you have no other responsibilities, I don't understand how any human being follows all of those restrictions for six weeks. I understand they're important and I am worried every single day that I am doing too much or doing something that is messing up my recovery, is gonna make me have to redo this surgery, whatever. I am petrified of it. But in order for life to function, I have to do some of those things. So I'm being careful about everything I do. When I bend over, I attempt to like relieve pressure off of that area as I do it. Like I don't really know how to explain it other than like you'll feel it when you bend. And you'll be surprised that you won't realize how much you actually feel or use or you know put pressure on that pelvic floor area until it hurts. Now I realize, oh, every time I do that thing, yeah, that hurts down there, oh wow. Yeah, uh, all this time I have been putting, you know, stress, stress and pressure on that area prior to the surgery and didn't even know it. Now I know because I feel it, you know, coughing, sneezing, you never felt that before. Now I feel it. Bending a certain way, squatting a certain way, whatever, you feel it. So um, I'm just trying to be really cautious, but some things like, I just, I can't not pick something off the floor if I drop it or, you know, my kids need me to grab a toy or, like whatever, it's just very, very hard to follow the restriction of no squatting, no bending, no lifting, like all those things. So I'm following lifting. Probably the thing I'm doing the most wrong is I'm just not laying around enough. So I had been told by the nurses I should probably walk about a block a day. 
I have an Apple Watch, I'm not wearing it today, but there are times just around my house, like I don't go anywhere, around my house I clock two miles. I, again, I don't have the luxury of laying on my couch all day, every day. So I don't know, I'm worried like what this is doing, but it just really wasn't an option for me to take any more time off work and I'm trying to sit as much as I can, but really the only thing that truly relieves the pressure down there and feels actually like restorative and relaxing is laying flat because it takes all the pressure off. Sitting actually, you know, I've been in meetings this last week and they're long meetings. I'm sitting there for like two hours. There are times I have to get up and stand because it hurts too much to sit. So you have to find this fine line between like walking too much, sitting too much, standing too much. And then, you know, the best thing to do is to lay flat. Um, I just thought of this. It wasn't on my list. I've really enjoyed using a heating pad. Now I told you I use the heating pad like on my stomach for the um, hysterectomy area. But I've also taken a heating pad and kind of like folded it and put it down there like <laughs> kind of wedged it in that area um and it really feels good at the end of the day and I truly think it helps with swelling like it makes me feel better but I've burned through two heating pads doing that because you're not supposed to fold them like that so what I have done instead now is I um what did I do with it I don't know what I did with it I took a sock like a women's dress sock the kind that go up to like your calf um, and I filled it with rice. Like you can put any kind of rice. Mine was like a basmati rice mixture, whatever. Tie the sock and then you put it in the microwave. For me, my microwave takes about 45 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds. And you get it not so hot. It's going to burn your skin, obviously, but like good and warm. And that is the perfect size to wedge down there. And it stays hot for 15 to 20 minutes. Then you can reheat it if you need to, but it's better than burning up your heating pads. So make yourself a rice sock. Um, Let's see. Um, I really, I've covered about everything. Um, another thing, I called my nurses a couple of weeks ago and I told them that I had like a strange smell down there that I would describe as like Parmesan cheese. Again, I was told that was part of the recovery process. It was just from the stitches and whatever. But I thought that was strange because when I would read about it online, I found a few articles talking about how that's a form of an infection. So I tried to just believe them. However, I just want to note that it's a little strange that after I took the antibiotic for the UTI, that smell is gone. So I think that was an infection. So again, if you get that smell, you think something's wrong, call the nurses. Try to convince them it's not just normal healing. I don't know. But at least for me, that smell is completely gone now that I um, took the antibiotic. Um, I still occasionally get some cramping that feels like period cramps. Like it feels like I have really bad period cramps, like my uterus is cramping, but I don't have a uterus anymore. So that's strange. I don't know. I guess it's just the area healing from the hysterectomy, but um, a little bit of ibuprofen and a heating pad seems to help with that. And it is also on days where I feel like I've probably done too much. Um, okay. I really think that that's it for today. I think I've covered about everything. Um, I will update again. I'm going to keep you guys posted on how things go with my feelings of urgency and dribbling and all of that. And oh, I just pray that goes away because I don't want to deal with that. Um, otherwise, external healing, I think, is is pretty good. From time to time, I still have kind of like a burning or an irritation down there. Like like there's a raw spot and then I just put a little estrogen cream on it and usually it's it's better by the end of the day. Um, I don't see stitches anymore. All of that has dissolved, but I am still definitely swollen down there and a little worried that things up in there don't seem normal. Like when I go to put the applicator from my estrogen cream for my estrogen cream up in there, instead of it just kind of going, it like, it's like I bump into things. So I'm worried about that too. Like, is that normal? I don't know. I'm not going to call the nurses because they're going to tell me it's normal. Don't worry about it till after the six weeks. So, okay, when I go to the surgeon in six weeks, I'll ask him, but it's kind of weird that I don't feel like I have a normal tunnel anymore. It's like I bump into a bunch of things, so I don't know. But um, anyways, please use the comment feature or the email feature to get a hold of me if you have any questions. I will be posting future updates, but 
at four months, sorry, four weeks um, post-surgery, I would say that the pain is definitely mostly gone. I feel pressure when I've overdone it down there and at the end of the day, almost every day. But um, my biggest concern and issue right now is just the urinary symptoms that I'm hoping go away. So, all right, guys. Thank you.